doesn't work and focusing on what does. Uh, trading without indicators, which is something that I focus on exclusively and a lot of our traders as well. Trying to remove noise and stopping distractions, you know, getting rid of all those fancy colors and bells and whistles and things. Uh, emulating the successful traders and trying not to reinvent the wheels. You know, I've been doing this for quite a long time now, so I can see some behaviors that are more effective at learning how to day trade. So I hope – I'm not here to sell you anything. But I'm, what I'm going to try and do today is be able to try to give you some insights into what we do, and hopefully that you can use that for your own trading. And then we're also at the end of the webinar. I'm going to invite you to a live market class tomorrow that we're going to host. Normally, you know, we can say a lot after the fact, but we always try to do all of our training in the live market because that's what's important. And in that class tomorrow, uh, we may have another one next week as well, depending on your guys' availability. You'll also learn our two-step trading process of what we do in, in the live market. So we try to keep things very, very simple because day trading obviously is already hard enough as it is. So the first thing I want to show you guys, the CFTC disclosure. Uh, you know, this is something that we're required to show you by the, by the government, you know, basic basic disclosure stating, you know, be very careful day trading. The risks are very high. To put it in a nutshell, don't don't trade your mortgage money, right? <laughs> and past results are may not be indicative of future results as well. So if you guys have any questions about that disclosure, I'm sure you've seen it before, let me know. Uh, Tom, we don't read any tape. For, for us, it's mostly about reading uh, price. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. I'll go over today's market activity as well. Uh, we had a live market cloud this morning with anybody, everybody in the training program, so we'll definitely go through some of those trades and give you a little bit of those insights as well that we had today. Uh, so my name is Marcello Arambide. I'm the CEO and founder of uh, the Day Trading Academy. I've been trading now for about 12 years. I'm going on 12 years. I've been coaching, helping guys out, training guys for about 10 years now. And what I do specifically now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, is I travel around the world and I day trade. That's what I did exclusively a few years ago. I'll tell you my story, how I started teaching again. And at the moment, I am in Colombia. I'm living here. We're in the, the process of actually buying a, a pretty large home here to house our one of our first day trading centers, a prop floor here. And basically what we're doing is we're teaching some of the locals here in Colombia how to trade with us to trade our money with the strategy that we use. Uh, Wilhelm, I am not Paisa. No, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not Paisa. And I'll just repeat that, Tom. What we're doing now in, in Colombia is starting a, a day trading center here to be able to go ahead and train some of the locals about how to trade our money with our strategy. That's one of the things we do in the, in the training program. We try to kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, just put our money where our mouth is, so to speak. So that's really, really exciting here in Colombia. I'm really, really excited to share some of those, some of those developments. So just to show you guys some pictures, this is me in Ethiopia feeding a wild hyena with my mouth. Um, that was pretty surreal. This is Bolivia at the Salt Flats. This is in uh, Salar de Uyuni. And it looks like we're having a little bit of sound issues, guys. So I'll, I'll try to repeat myself and go as slow as possible. So this is uh, Salar de Uyuni in Bolivia. Uh, this is Brazil. This is northern Brazil, a beach called Jericoacoara. That's in northern Brazil. Uh, Wayne, I am in Medellin, Colombia. Jasek, no sound issues for you. Okay, yeah, I'll just try to speak a little bit slower, guys, and repeat myself in case some of you are having some issues. My internet is, is pretty fast, so I don't think it's on my end here. Uh, the next one here, this is India. Taj Mahal, beautiful, beautiful place. We were in India. We, we worked on some uh, training, actually, with CNBC there in India as well. We were able to do some traveling there around India. If you ever have a chance to go to India, uh, Vivek is there, one of my traders. So if you guys have any questions about the Taj Mahal for him. Uh, Wilhelm, no, I'm in Laureles, actually. 
Uh, right now I'm living in Estadio, and the place that we're buying is in Laureles. Uh, this is the Marina Bay Sands Resort in Singapore, the rooftop pool. Uh, we were living in Singapore for a few months there, you know, in, in getting incorporated and also doing some, some business there in terms of trading as well. So uh, everybody always asks me for some of the pictures of, of when I travel around the world, so I always like to share those. If you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, so on to the good stuff. I started trading right out of high school. I took out $25,000 in student loans, and I lost that in a month. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to learn how to day trade is because it's the only profession in the world that allows you to have your freedom, right? How many experienced traders do we have in the room, by the way? Give me a one in the room if you're, you've been trading for more than six months, and then give me a two in the room if you've been trading less than six months. Just curious to know kind of the, the breakdown. So, you know, day trading for the most part is the only career that I know of where it doesn't matter what the, the economy is doing, right? If, you're, if you have your own business or you are selling real estate, for example, if the economy goes into a recession, you're not going to be able to sell things to anybody, right? So day trading for me was the ultimate profession because you can make money when the market is going up or down, when it's in a recession, and I see most of you guys are pretty experienced, so that's, that's very good. It took me about two years to become consistent and profitable. Uh, what happened with me is that I, I went through the normal process with that loan money. I bought software after software, indicators after indicators, and that's one of the reasons why I want to talk to you a little bit today about not focusing on those things because they're not important, especially in the, the kind of market environment that we're in right now. Once I achieved a bit of success, you know, I, I know that we all gravitate towards success. So I started teaching some guys, you know, just trader to trader. And eventually I was approached by a lot of companies to do strategy development. So I was in the industry after that. And I left the last company I was with due to some ethical concerns. I, you know, what, what ended up happening, just to put it in a nutshell, is they, they tried to sell indicators and software and try to upsell people into things they didn't need, and I, I didn't want to be part of that. So I ended up starting traveling around the world, and a lot of the traders from the last company I was with found me through that travel blog that I shared with you guys a moment ago at Wandering Trader, and I... I ended up helping them again, and what I did is I, I let them decide how much they wanted to pay. Uh, I never anticipated teaching again. You know, a lot of people always ask me, well, why do you teach if you can make money trading? And that, the, that was the goal in the beginning, but I felt responsible because I left the last company I was with. So I let all of those guys decide how much they wanted to pay, you know, just to have their money on the line to, to make sure that they were serious. I had a pretty good life traveling around the world, so I wanted to make sure that that they were serious about that. Uh, yeah, Tom, uh, teaching is one of the best ways to learn. I'm actually going to get into how we do that with some of our master traders as well. So uh, what ended up happening was, you know, more and more guys came on board. You know, word of mouth kind of got out. We we started seeing a pretty high level of success. And so the core focus for us is freedom and lifestyle. You know, it's not about making a million dollars and buying fancy toys. It's really about living the life that you want to live, right? And if you're able to make a consistent profit in the markets every day, whether that's, you know, $100 or $1,000, then you can make a living doing this. And, and you know, whether your, your freedom or your goal is freedom or spending time with your kids, you know, we, we just visited one of our traders in Italy that took his entire family to Italy for the summer. It was, it was a very, very cool to experience that with them. What I ended up doing is I started something called the LTD project, and this is uh, the Learning How to Day Trade project. And the idea was to really find out what it took to be successful trading, right? I, I get a lot of questions over the years. People were asking me, well, what does it take? How much money does it take? How long does it take? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to teach people the right way. So I got a handful of my friends and, and other people that were interested, and they became our first in-house traders. And what we did is, you know, we taught them how to read the market the right way. We got rid of the indicators. We got rid of the software, all the fancy bells and whistles. And what we ended up finding out is, you know, we know that everybody can't be successful at this, right? Every, you know, it's not 100%. 
but the industry average of successful traders is about one out of 10 traders. And we were able to achieve a, a much higher success rate of about 1.17 out of three traders, or that's about 3.3 or so out of 10, which was, which was really, really phenomenal. And that's one of the reasons we're starting to tr open these training centers around the world to, to train some of the locals. And so one of our promises is to everybody that enters the training program and to our in-house traders, we, we don't hire any employees, guys. Tom, this is one of the things that you were talking about in terms of uh, teaching is the best way to learn. We don't have any live class instructors. We don't have employees. We don't have programmers. We don't have education counselors. There's no BS. The teachers that we have at the academy are actually the students that have graduated and are trading their own money live. And the idea is to feed upon itself where we use our successful traders to teach our newer traders. And at the same time, those successful traders are able to make their techniques even better. And that's one of the reasons why we, you know, we now have a more advanced and pro curriculum as well. Um, so that's, that's uh, the history behind, you know, how we started day trading. Uh, we'll kind of get into the meat and potatoes here. Many of you have, you know, you stated a moment ago that you've been trading for more than, than six months. How many of you guys have, have been around for a few years? Or how many of you guys have been, uh, you, know, you know, have been through a few companies, for, for example? So quite a few guys are saying, yeah, three years, two and a half years. So we got a bunch of guys that have been here for a while. So you guys probably know the typical kind of business model, right? Um, I'm just sharing this because this is my experience. Most indicators were invented about 15, 20 years ago. And what, what I have seen and the reason why I left, left the last company I was with is because what happens is people change the colors of indicators, they give them unique names, and then they call them unique. And then what happens is they'll create signals and confirmations and then the concept is to keep you paying them monthly. That way you have the signals and the software and then that's how basically, you know, the, these guys get you. That's what the industry is all about, right? You're, you're, you're upsold into a monthly pay package and then a seminar and then a premium product. So one of the things that I try to do, especially with all of our in-house traders, is to really teach you how the market works. The, the, the basic premise is you teach somebody how to fish, they can feed themselves for a lifetime. So that's, that's you know, kind of the, the background for those of you that haven't seen this in the industry. It's, you know, it's, it's rampant. And one of the things about indicators, I'm sure that many of you guys know, is that indicators are all lagging, right? Indicators are a, a computer program. So what happens is they, they are calculating previous information, whereas the only thing that we know is live or current is price action, right? And we're going to get into the live market uh, right away. We'll, we'll review some of the trades that we had today in our live class, Maurice. So this is kind of what the, you know, what the today's, you know, systems look like with the colors and the bells and the whistles. Uh, this is what we use. A lot of times we'll use what we call the Victoria's Secret chart. <laughs> and the Victoria's Secret chart is a chart that we have with absolutely no indicators on it. Uh, we call it Victoria's Secret because uh, we think that's fresh and sexy. Uh, we, like to, we like to keep things clean and simple because it's already hard enough how to trade. So one of the things I just kind of want to discuss, you know, there are a million different traders out there that use a million different indicators. They combine them a million different ways. So what do you guys think is the bottom line for learning how to day trade? Obviously, you guys are here because you want to learn something to improve your own trading or see a level of consistency that you may not have had before. So I want to ask you guys, what do you think, what do you think is the key that profitable traders are, are using for success? What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, they are, there are Keltner channels. Uh, they are bands. Uh, the indicators I just showed you guys a moment ago, but we'll get into some of the live market analysis here in a second. Uh, price action, David, price and volume, money management, support and resistance, price levels. Yeah, so most of you guys are saying that it's price. And, uh, oh, personal psychology, Doug, that's a good one. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's being able to understand how the market works. Would you guys agree? It's being able to really understand, uh, you know, 
strong momentum is being able to understand how, what strong momentum is, when not to take a trade. Ideally, the only thing that we want to understand is how the market works. And for the most part, what the market is, guys, is human behavior. Would you guys agree? Human behavior is essentially people making decisions of whether to go long or short. So when we're able to understand how the market works, that's really when we're able to get a deeper understanding of what causes the market to move. And then that's what gives us the ability to be able to go ahead and understand movement and anticipate movement as well, right? So uh, three of the things that we've been able to identify and, and the guys that we've been able to train that have been successful, the first thing is developing your own personal trading style. I'm going to get to this in a little bit more detail in a moment, but the concept behind this is, you know, you guys are not like me. You, we, we aren't like other people. We have different risk tolerances. We have different personalities. So some of you might be more aggressive. Some of you might be more conservative, right? And the, the concept here is to be able to develop our own personal style within a framework, right? Understanding how the market works and then go ahead and applying those, those kind of dynamic rules-based principles to the market to be able to go ahead and, and look at the market the right way. Understanding market movement and behaviors, you know, that, that's a given. I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the, the traders that we had in our live class today to kind of give you a little bit more understanding of this. And then identifying high probability circumstances. I, I talk uh, a lot. I talk to a lot of people that I'll show them a certain behavior or a certain movement in the market, and they'll consider that to be aggressive, right? Some of you more conservative traders. How many of you guys are conservative traders in here, by the way? So the idea is to understand what those high probability movements are so we know when to be aggressive right? Uh, we call this congressive, essentially being conservative when the market isn't moving well and being aggressive when the market is moving well. So your personal trading style, the idea is when, when we use a set of indicators and software-based systems, we're not able to have adaptability, right? The market is always going to change throughout time. And through the last 10 years, we've seen a lot of differences in how the market is going to move. One of the things that we've noticed is before, you know, for a lot of you more senior traders that have been here for a bit, did you guys notice years ago how the market would move in waves? In two or three days, the market would move the same, or in a week or two, it would move as the same, and then eventually it would change after that? Now the market is completely different. One day we'll have a really erratic market. The next day we might have a really slow-moving market, right? So... It's important to be able to understand what we're going to do to be able to adapt to that. Uh, do you have to take consideration of HFT? I don't know what HFT is, Tom. If you want to let me know what that is, my man. So new traders that are, that are new to trading should just focus on discipline and consistency, right? Discipline and consistency, no matter what you're looking at the market, the idea is to just understand when to take a trade, when not to take a trade. That's it. And for you more advanced traders, the idea is to understand advanced movements in the market to be able to capitalize on high probability movements. And so what we want to do is develop a style that works within your framework. And, and one of the things that we do, and I'll highlight this a little bit in just a moment, is we use different students. Uh, Richard, I'm going to get to that in just a moment, my man. What we do is we use different students that are actually trading their own accounts. They're a little bit more aggressive. Some are a little bit more conservative. Some are a little bit more long-term, and then that will allow you to develop a strategy according to what you feel comfortable with, right? Um, the changes in the market, I would not say that it is only because of the high-frequency trading, William, Wilhelm and Tom. Another reason why the market is moving the way it is is because of the uncertainty that we have in the market right now. Right, there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty. So one piece of news might spike the market. You know, I'll give you an example. Back in 2000, if I'm not mistaken, 2008, 2009, oil would really affect the market because of what was going on with, with crude. Uh, today, you know, it might be what's going on in Syria or different dynamics in terms of the Indian economy crashing, 
and the dollar surging. You know, there's so many different things now, and there's so much uncertainty that one little piece of news actually moves the market. Now, understanding market movements, as I mentioned a moment ago, how the markets are moving much faster than before, we have to be able to identify what strong movement is, right? We have to be able to learn when to be aggressive, and then we have to be able to know when not to trade. We have to know when not to put a trade in. We have to know when to kind of sit back and wait for the choppy markets and the slow-moving markets to kind of get out of the way so we can we can – you know, capitalize on the markets every day. And then we have to also be able to change as the market changes as well. Um, there's getting, you know, there's a lot of advanced things that we can talk about guys. So I'll, I'll try to get into some of that in just a moment when we go through some of the charts. Uh, but also at the end of the webinar, I'm going to invite you guys to that live market analysis class tomorrow to try and watch the market live to kind of apply some of these principles in the live market. And then high probability circumstances. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about what day trading is in terms of being able to just understand how the market moves, right? When we're trading, we have to know when to be aggressive in getting in. We have to know when to anticipate deeper retracements, right? If we're always going to take a trade from a certain area, we have to know when not to take the trade at that area. And we always have to know when not to take trades as well. And I'm going to, I think we're going to get into that right now. So let me let me go ahead and switch over here to try to share my charts, guys. Give me one sec. All right, charts will be coming up here in a second. All right, there we go. All right, can everybody see my screen okay? Okay, brilliant. So just to give you guys a little idea about what we look for in terms of, of trades, the, this little green box and red box signifies what we look for in terms of risk versus reward. What we try to do and the, the way that we try to look at the market is we always try to go after the highest probability movement. In the beginning, our beginners, they try to just understand market movement, right? Understanding when not to take a trade, understanding when to be aggressive for a trade. And our more advanced traders learn more advanced market dynamics in terms of being aggressive or, or getting in, for example, uh, quickly, right? Scalping for a point or two points. Does everybody in the room understand how e-mini futures work? Okay, everybody, I don't see any no's in the room. Okay, so uh, Lorna, do you not know how, what, how e-mini futures work? Okay, so we got a few no's in the room. So what we primarily teach is on the e-mini S&P 500, okay? And what we try to teach is to be able to understand market movement. That way you'll be able to apply this to any market that you want to trade. Uh, we do have some traders that trade oil G. Uh, we have some traders that even trade smaller markets like, uh, you know, the Euro USD. We have some guys that trade the Australian Bund or the DAX. You know, the principles that we teach apply to all of these markets. Uh, you can trade Forex as well, Dave. The concept is to be able to understand movement, right? If you're able to understand market movements, you're going to be able to uh, understand any, apply that to any market movement for the most part. So just for the, the handful of guys that didn't understand what e-mini futures are, e-mini futures move in ticks. Okay, so instead of moving in dollars and cents, they move in ticks. The e-mini S&P 500 moves in points. So one point equals four ticks. Okay, one point is $50 per contract. And one tick, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, guys, I believe that's $12.50. So the idea is if you make five points on 10 contracts, not 120, right? That's five points, which equals, and I'm trying to type fast, guys. So if I have some typos in here, sorry about that. $250 with 10 contracts or 250 times 10, that equals $2,500. Everybody clear on that? 
So it's pretty simple. There's four quarters and a dollar, four ticks to a point. So the idea is to look for opportunities that are high probability, and our average winner is about two points, and our average loser is about four ticks. So that's about $100 per contract and win, and then about $50 per loser per, per lost. And so the idea is when we're able to go ahead and understand market movement, we really only have to be right about 40% of the time because our winners are bigger than our losers, and we win more than we lose. That's the concept. It's, it's a pretty basic concept, right? So going into today's market activity, I wanted to show the naked chart first. Okay, naked chart first. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up a notepad here to kind of hide some of this market activity, guys. Right? Some of this market activity. So if we were looking just on that hard right chart, what direction would you guys say the market is going in? Would you guys say it's up or down? What do you guys think? Yeah, up. Okay, yeah, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. If we look at, kind of go back here and do this, what direction would you say the market is going in now, guys? And I'm just, I'm using this little notepad to hide part of the market activity. Right, so uh, all you guys are in agreement. Now when we kind of see the entire picture, we have more of an idea of what direction the market is going in, which is down. So let me ask you guys, would you guys take a trade to the upside here? What do you guys think about that? Uh, Dave, the time frame isn't necessarily important. I would say that the behavior is important because when you're, we only look at one time frame, one chart to be able to go ahead and capitalize on intraday movements and smaller swings. So the time frame of a chart really doesn't matter because if you're just looking at one chart, you're going to be able to capitalize on the, on the movements on that chart. Uh, I can enlarge them a little bit for you here, Tom. These aren't candles. This is actually tick charts. So I can, I can, I can do it that way, Tom, for you. That might be a little bit better to see. Uh, but you can't see the entire picture. The, the idea is to try to understand the, the flow of the market, right, and the behavior. So for the most part here, what we have, for the most part what we have is the market is giving us pretty significant moves to the downside and then not very significant movement back up. But what I want you guys to really pay attention to is the individual movement individual movement of the actual bars. This is, this is the whole point of what I'm trying to get at and what I want you guys to understand. Everybody see how quick these movements are to the downside, these quick pops to the downside? See that? This is what we call a snap, crackle, pop right here. Everybody see that? The idea is to understand the strength in these movements to be able to capitalize on them. So overall, overall what we see here is that we have a really strong move to the downside and then a very weak move back up. Everybody see how we're not really getting very strong moves to the upside? Everybody see that? Now, one of the important things to understand about the market is there's no way to really tell whether, what's going to be the high or the low, right? We can talk about support and resistance areas. We can talk about retracement levels. But we're really not going to know when the market is going to turn, when the market is really going to pivot in a certain direction. Would you guys agree with me? So this, for us, would be a valid trade. We would take this to the upside. As I mentioned earlier, this would be a, a trade that we had in our live class this morning. This would be a live trade for us, or not a live trade, a valid trade that we would take. But what we would want to see is a certain amount of confirmation or movement to be able to go ahead and capitalize on more opportunities to the upside. So even though we didn't get a strong move initially, we got enough confirmation in this movement right here. And I know I'm, I know I'm, uh, I'm going back and forth with that, uh, that notepad, but I want you guys to just pay attention to this market activity here. So the concept is to be able to capitalize on this high probability movement. Uh, we would enter Tom at the arrows. So the market, this is where we would enter, but we would consider this more of an advanced type opportunity because we have to understand that it may not get to our targets. I'm going to talk to our targets here in a moment. Does that make sense, guys? 
So when we pull back for another opportunity, this would not be opportunities that we would take because we know that the probabilities of the market continuing to the upside are not as strong anymore. Does that make sense, guys? Now, once the market continues in the same direction, right, if we just look at this, we already talked about how we had a real strong move to the upside, a very weak move, and then we got a bit of a reversal pattern here, right? This is what the market looks like there on the, on the left. Once the market gives us a move to the downside like that, everybody see the verticality of this move? Everybody see how quick that move popped to the downside? And what I mean by that, for those of you that don't, for everybody that, that doesn't look at tick charts, look at how all of these bars here are kind of jumbled together. There's not very decisive movement. And look at the difference between this quick move here, this quick move here, and then this quick move here on the right side. When we, see, when we see that quick move, we know that the market is going to continue to the downside because we have a strong pop to the downside that coincides with overall momentum, right? And because it all coincides with that overall expectation, we can look to be aggressive here. So this, this opportunity right in here, everybody see that little blip that uh, we call this, we call this a snap, crackle, pop, but you know, quick move, very quick pullback. This would be the kind of scenario where we would want to get in aggressively because we know when, whenever we have that kind of move and that, that correlates with such a strong overall move, we know that it's going to continue to the downside. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, how do you read the ticks to the enter? Is the short and length of ticks? Uh, Gary, there is a certain sign to be able to know when to get in, but what we do is we have certain rules for trades. And what we've done is we've developed certain situations where we would look for deeper retracements, certain situations where we wouldn't look for those same trades based on pattern recognition and support and resistance areas. But for the most part, this is the, this is the, the majority of what we do. Leon, we don't use any volume. Uh, because you can actually identify the volume in the bars. Uh, the whole concept here, Leon, is that when you have this kind of move that pops to the downside, there's a lot of strength, in other words, a lot of volume there to the downside. Does that make sense, Leon? That's why we don't use volume. Yeah, Richard, uh, I mean, essentially, it's, it's not technically volume bars, but you can see the actual behavior and the strength in the actual tick bars. Uh, Simon, I don't know who that is. And then what we also do, what we also do here as well is we identify some reversal patterns, right? So if I switch back over to this chart here, this is going to show you some of our valid opportunities that we had, uh, this morning, All right? So we had, we had a pretty strong move here to the downside. This behavior here tells us that we're going to see a deeper retracement, okay? This move here identifies that we're going to see deeper retracement, so we can anticipate this move here. Notice that we had a pro setup. Um, I, ca I can't really get into the, the targets and the exits. Um, Leon, can you use for swing trading? Absolutely. Uh, Tom, how about a stop loss in today trading and eagle eye? You're probably not relevant. All of our beginners, uh, Polly and Tom, all of our beginners use a set. Uh, what we call it is a hold for a target or stop. Okay, that's, that's what we call it. It's called HTS. So the idea, the idea here, guys, is when you start to learn this behavior, you're not going to worry about getting out of trades. You're not going to worry about where to get out. What you're going to do is you're going to have a set target and stop system. We call it HTS, right? Hold for target or the stop. And the only thing that you're going to worry about is when to get in a trade and when to get out. That's it. You're going to learn how to understand the behavior of the market. In other words, learn when to be aggressive, learn when to be conservative, when to not get in a trade. Does that make sense, uh, Leon and Tom? So the, the, the risk management and what I call the profit management is already built into the system. What we're doing now for our advanced traders and, and, and our pro traders is we're developing dynamic stops. And what that means is 
And this goes against your, uh, your question there, Richard, that when the market is more volatile, when there's more volume and more volatility, we increase those targets. Okay? When there is less volume and volatility, we decrease those targets. And this is, this is what we want to teach you guys to be able to understand the movement of the market. How do we detect volatility? Uh, there's a few ways that we do that, Leon. It has to do with the, the, um, the actual movement and price. It has to do with paying attention to things like the options expiration week where there's typically less volatility and less movement. Uh, the lines here just represent the arrows. The two arrows are entries for trades, Tom. So two arrows are the entries for trades. One arrow are exits. And then the yellow lines are basically live trades. Right? Those would be the actual, the actual trades. So notice, notice that, you know, sometimes some things, you know, we, we leave money on the table, so to speak. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we had today, uh, we don't include any of our advanced and pro setups in any of the results. We're going to go through some of the results for you uh, in our live class tomorrow and possibly next week. Uh, but just our beginners, our beginners so far this year have had a 44.86 win ratio. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I included this in the presentation today because I wanted to go through a little bit more detail tomorrow. Uh, but I believe for the month of July with one contract, it was about 1300 uh, in profits with one contract. Uh, with 10 contracts, I believe it was about, you know, just multiply that by 10. Uh, Richard, it's funny that I've been most profitable when I trade this way. Unfortunately, I don't do it often. Yeah, Richard, that's why what we try to do in the beginning is have you develop that discipline, right? One of the things that we try to do is, in, is instill that discipline into your own trading, Richard. We have a lot of traders, for example, that uh, they decided to go ahead and, and you know, use a variation of the strategy. Uh, BJ, I actually developed that with him. Uh, that was the company that I left that I mentioned earlier due to ethical concerns. And a lot of the traders that I have now that are teaching the classes with me came from that academy. So it's, it's not necessarily, Richard, about, um, you know, it's really about trying to develop that discipline in your own trading to be able to go ahead and understand when to get in those trades. Everybody see the X's on the charts? Everybody see those exits? Or sorry, the X's on the chart. The X's are valid trades for us that we would not take based on market behavior. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys... Let me remove some of these arrows here. Give me one second. Right, so when we go in to understand behavior, okay, this is uh, obviously a support area. Let me just kind of draw here. This is obviously a support area, right? So when we talk about the expectation of where the market is going to go, we have a support area that is holding here, right, guys? So would you guys expect this area of support to hold? Would you guys not trade into that area? What do you guys say about that? What do you guys think about that? All right, here we go. So now we're going to get into some good stuff. So all of you guys are saying that it would hold. Polly, you wouldn't buy. You'd wait for a breakout. Okay, so this is, this is the way that I would explain this to you, okay? And this is what I want everybody to understand because this is the problem that a lot of us have when we learn how to day trade, okay? We have a, a situation where we had a massive, massive run to the downside. You guys with me so far? Just a massive run to the downside, right? A lot of strength, right? Then the market comes up. We had a bit of a, I would call this a micro trend in the opposite direction, right? And then the market continues back to the downside. Now, this is the question that I want to ask you guys. Based on the behavior of what we're seeing, that what we just mo you know, talked about a moment ago in terms of the strength in the move, would you guys say, and I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to expand this as much as possible, guys, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. 
this is the question I have with you guys. It, are the moves to the downside stronger than the moves up? So stop thinking about that support area for a second and answer that. Are the moves to the downside stronger than the moves back up? Moves are stronger to the downside. So now let me, let me frame the way that you think about the market a little bit differently, okay? Stop thinking about retest of support area. Stop thinking about, you know, uh, you know the amount of, of buy or ask bids on each side of, of the dome and think in terms of behaviors, okay? Uh, and I know I misspelled that, so sorry if I misspelled that here, guys. I misspelled it twice. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to type fast here. Behaviors. There we go. All right. You guys are going to just have to deal with my, my misspelling here. <laughs> behaviors. There we go. Okay. So think about it in terms of behaviors. Based on the initial move to the downside, would you guys say that this, this move and this move changed the behavior of the market to the downside? Right, so some of you, a lot of, most of you are saying no. Some of you are saying yes. For those of you that are saying yes, I would say that the answer to that is no. And the reason why is because we did not get a, a I would say, a confirmation move or a pop in the opposite direction. The, some of you that are saying yes are probably looking at this move right here. Would you guys agree? This move right there, that little bit of a pop off of the area. That's what you guys are looking at to, to base that decision off of? See, I would say look at the grand scheme of things, right? We have that one run to the upside, but we never got the confirmation. Notice how the market came back down. We got a little bit of another run up. And then notice how it didn't continue going back up. Notice how the market started giving us that same behavior to the downside. Everybody see these moves right here? Everybody see those moves? So understanding that behavior and understanding that the market is not giving us the confirmation to counteract the strength in the opposite direction, we would be, for example, all over this. This would be a valid trade for us, right? And notice what happens here. We got a, we got a little bit of a, I would say, a little bit of a, you know, stagnant behavior there at the end. This is what terrifies people, and this is why traders don't take trades into these areas, for example. Uh, answer some questions here. Vass, so you look at the grand scheme, but when do you take heed of quick movements? Vass, I think I just answered your question with this behavior here. Am I right? Uh, Polly, don't know what an ABCD pattern is. I try to not place specific rules on things because when you – what I, the way that I try to describe it, Polly, is a, a, a dynamic rules-based system, right? There is a set structure that we abide in. There's a set structure that we follow in order to look for things. But we don't like quote-unquote rules, and the reason why is because when you have a rule, that can't be broken, right? The market is always going to change, so if you put a rule on that, that's kind of a cheat sheet of what to do. But if you understand behavior – and you understand the market, at that point, you're going to understand those exceptions. Does that make sense? Richard, and let me kind of just scroll up here, guys. Richard, so if it's down and then it up moves or countered by similar down moves, those down moves negate the sharp upward movement. Uh, I would say yes, Richard, but uh, it's backwards, right? The move, even though you had one sharp up move, doesn't negate the fact that you had so much, so much of a strong move to the downside. Jack, higher time frame chart would show how significant the support is. Uh, we always try to look at one time frame, Jack, and the reason why is because looking across multiple time frames, we have we found to be a little bit confusing for most people. Uh, Edward, a dilemma has been created. I was seriously considering. Um, <laughs> Edward, I, I don't want to get into too much details into that, but, um, you know, I, I left, you know, I, I kind of gave my story. If you want a little bit more details into that, I'd be happy to go ahead and provide you the names and emails of some of the traders that are teaching for us today that actually are understanding the market movement. Uh, and they came from, from that last company. 
Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I, I try to be as transparent as possible, Edward. So, you know, don't take my word for it. I'd be happy to give you names and emails of traders that I was able to make profitable. I still get a lot of referrals actually from previous students. Uh, Richard, in other words, what direction is the path of least resistance? Yeah, that's basically the way to, to look at it. Jeff, it's either breaking through support or it's a fixed sucker move to run stops. Uh, that's another way to put it, Jeff, but I'd agree with you, yes. Uh, Behavior is like a body in motion and tends to move in that direction. Uh, Newton's my hero. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, so that, that's basically what we try to under, what we try to teach. You know, I, I, I don't, Tom, lower lows and higher highs is a little bit of a cheat sheet. Um, there, there's going to be circumstances where you have, you know, I'll, I'll put it in this context here, Tom. If we were looking at this market and now uh, this actual market right here, okay, if we were looking at this right here, notice technically we had higher highs here. Would you agree, Tom? So some might look at this and say, okay, well, the market's going higher because we had higher highs. When in reality, that isn't the way that you should look at the market because you, if you understand behavior, higher highs and lower lows don't really matter, right? Those, those rules that a lot of traders create are essentially cheat sheets for people that don't understand how the market works. What I try to do, and especially with a lot of our in-house traders since they're trading our money, is you know, I want to teach them how to understand the market because I don't want you to rely on me to trade, right, Tom? I don't want to give you a signal or a software package or an indicator to tell you what to do because that's never going to be reliable for you. What's going to be reliable for you is when you understand market behavior and then you don't need any indicators, right? You don't need any software. You don't need anybody to tell you what you're going to do because you're going to understand the movement. That's, that's the whole goal, Jack. Uh, Jack, high frame, high time frame support and resistance provide may answers to shorter time frame moves. Yeah, the, the 610 tick chart on the ES is, I would say, a larger time frame, but not a, a very big, you know, not like a 1597 tick chart. What I, we used to look at three charts. It used to be a, a higher time frame, like a 1597 or 2897, a smaller time frame for entries, like a 233. And then the middle chart, which is a 610. What I realized and what we discovered is that that's too much information. When you have so many colors and indicators and, and different charts, you don't understand what's going on. If you focus just on one thing, Jack, just one thing, and you focus on behavior and what the market is doing, like what I was telling you a moment ago in terms of, okay, strong move down, weak move up. You get a pop to the downside. Okay, look for trade. Be aggressive here because you know it's going down. Does that make sense? We have, we have something, Jack, called the snap, crackle, pop that basically is a move like this. When you, have a very, when you have a move that's very, very vertical and you have a very weak move in an in opposite direction, you're going to get a continuation here. And this is part of some of our advanced and pro trades. I would put this movement at over 95% accuracy. And this is part of understanding that, that market behavior, right? Notice how you had that behavior right here. I'll blow this up for you, Jack. I'll blow this up for you so you can see it. Maybe this will help you in your own trading. Notice there's your snap, there's your crackle, there's your pop. So look for your trade or even try to get in aggressively right here, even if it's only for a tick or two, right? Uh, Brett, 610 equates to about a minute chart at the market open. James, why don't traders ever use a round number on their ticks? Uh, James, that's actually a really good question. And the answer to that is every market has a specific personality, okay? Uh, and I'll explain it this way. Uh, I'll put the DAX. And this is a good way to explain it. I'll put the DAX and the oil markets here. After the DAX and oil, I would put the, uh, you know, some of the Forex market and the E-mini, like the Euro USD, which is the, uh, what's the, what's the symbol, guys, for Euro USD? 6E? 6E, that's what it is. Then you have other markets like the FESX. Uh, the ES, for example, and then you have other markets. I put gold in this market as well. And so each, each market has a certain level of volatility 
and erratic behavior, right? And this is the way I explain it. The Daxton oil are 16 year olds, okay? They're wild, they're crazy, they spike around all the time. Euro USD in the 60, these are more like, you know, mid 20s, 25 year olds where they're a little bit more subtle. They'll go out and party sometimes on the weekends. They'll get a little bit crazy, but for the most part, they're a little bit more reliable. And then these other markets like the FDSX, EX, and gold, they're more like middle-aged men, right? Uh, not that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to be middle-aged too, but, you know, they're very fluid markets. They move very, they move very easily. They, 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 they have very easy movements, right? But at the same time, they'll spike around on sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll only go out on Saturdays every two weeks kind of thing. So the idea behind using certain charts and what I've identified is that Fibonacci numbers, James, correlate directly with the chart. So for the 610, good charts are 610, 1597, 2897. Um, that's why they use specific charts because they correlate with those behaviors. Sorry for the long answer there, James, but that's, that's why they, they use those charts. Uh, Simon, answer your question about gold. When you trade the ES, how many ticks do you go for? Uh, Jesus, depends on whether you're a beginner or advanced. Uh, this is something else I'm going to get into tomorrow, but a beginner, for example, will use the, this system right here. Basically two for one. Two for one. An advanced trader, what will happen, an advanced trader and I'll, I'll put this up here for you. I'll, I'll, and we're kind of getting to the hour, guys. So I'll, I'll try to wrap this up for you guys. I know you guys, uh, I really appreciate you guys being here. I wanted to, a lot of you guys said that this is valuable for you. So I'm glad I was able to help. At the end here, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, a link to be able to sign up for our live class tomorrow and possibly next Wednesday as well. And I'll give you guys a little bit more tidbits that hopefully you can use in your own training. So beginner, you know, you have your, your two for one risk versus reward. Uh, your average, your average win loss is going to be uh, daily. This is daily, probably around 60 to 70 percent, right? Something like that. Uh, and then win, you know, minimum requirement for this would be about, as I mentioned before, about a 40 percent win ratio. Once you get to an advanced or pro point of view you're going to start looking for trades that are one for one risk versus reward. But these trades are, I would say about average win loss, I would say is about 80 to 90%. So you're taking, you're taking trades that are that win more, but the winners are a little bit losers. Uh, gee, we actually have live classes every week for everybody that's in the, in the training program. Um, but we're just doing it Wednesday just because it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's a good day for everybody. Wilhelm, we do have a live trading room. Yes, my man. Absolutely. Um, so just kind of hopping back in here, guys, let me see if I can switch over back to what we had. Okay. So can everybody, can everybody see this PowerPoint presentation? So you guys are obviously here because, you know, you want to look for consistency or you want to look for something that will help your own trading to kind of help you to get to the next level. Um, so just to kind of summarize the process, the first thing that you want to learn is market movement. You know, I, I, I'd challenge you guys to get rid of all of your indicators and watch the market without any indicators at all using that Victoria's Secret chart that we use with no indicators and see if you actually are able to identify different behaviors. After that, you want to develop discipline and learn how to control your own emotions, right? A lot of people, you know, technical analysis is only going to get you so far, right? How many, how many of you guys have had days where you make money four or five days in a row and then you have that one day where it goes all, you know, you lose all of the money that you made in those five days, right? You want to make sure that you have that discipline. And that's what we try to do with the, with the training program to be able to keep that discipline in your own trading. Capitalize on high probability movements, okay? Capitalize on those high probability movements. I guarantee you guys that when you stop looking at your indicators and you start looking at just naked price, you're going to start seeing some of these patterns and get different points of view. Okay, get different points of view. Uh, 
everybody is different. So you might be more aggressive. You might be more conservative. One of the things that we do is we have our students teach our classes, okay? And we do that on purpose because they explain things differently and it helps them to, to you know, improve their own trading. Uh, and then this is just a little bit of a, a tidbit of what we're going to go through tomorrow. Hey, Seuss, I, I didn't want to sell you anything today. I wanted to try and provide you some value. Um, this is a little bit of the process of what we go through to teach some of our traders. So if you guys want to uh, sign up for the live market class that we're going to have, I know, you know, after the fact, we can talk, uh, you can talk to, we can say a lot of things after the fact. So if you want to sign up for that webinar, it's completely free. What we're going to do is we're going to watch the live market. We're going to go ahead and uh, talk about some of these techniques. Hopefully, we'll get some of these trade setups in the live market as well. We're going to have that tomorrow at 12. We might have one next week as well. And um, kind of just answering some questions here. Leon, how do you find high probability movements? We have them already predetermined, Leon, with the trade setups that we have. Everybody in the training program is given the rules for all the trade setups. And everybody's given that process, right, that, that HTS process to be able to go ahead and develop your discipline. We have, we have a lot of guys, I'll be honest with you, Leon, I, I don't want to teach you a specific strategy. I want you to understand how the market works. We have a lot of traders that start with us but end up, you know, end up trading a different strategy or a variation of the strategy because the discipline that they learned they were able to apply at, you know, at another, at another system or another strategy or under other indicators. You know, I, I know that there's no holy grail out there. So my, my concept is to try to give you guys the tools to be able to go ahead and, and attack the market the right way. Uh, fractal thinking, Leon, honestly, uh, not to sound ignorant, but I don't know what that is. Uh, 12 p.m. EST, so Eastern time, that's New York time. So was um and just to kind of get your feedback, guys, was this uh was this helpful? Did you guys find this helpful? Uh, Enrique, could you send me a video of Wednesday's presentation? I have to leave tomorrow. Yeah, Enrique, if you just sign up at that URL, uh, we can go ahead and look you up and send you a recap. Sure thing. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Victor, I, I really don't want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, costs or anything like that. Victor, what I wanted to do today is just give you some good information on what you can do to improve your own trading. Tomorrow, if you want to join us, uh, we're gonna, we have a few openings left in the training program uh, because we, we only take on a certain amount of students every month, Victor, to keep the classes small, to make sure that all of our traders do well. Uh, so tomorrow we'll get into a little bit more detail in terms of, you know, availability and, and what options we have. James, on our day trading blog on the Day Trading Academy site, we share market recaps of some of our master traders, and we also have some live trading videos there as well if you want to check those out. Um, we are looking at something, Leon, in terms of different waves to be able to put them on one chart, but for the most part today we only look at one time frame. Uh, yes, Angelo, I'll send the link afterwards. Uh, Chuck, not enough. Uh, I, I'm sorry, my man. I, I wanted to try to make this as brief as possible. If I had to teach you everything that I know about trading in the markets, it would take a few days, my man. So sorry, sorry I couldn't get it all in there. Uh, Larry, what we teach is being able to understand how the market works. So we do have some traders that don't use any indicators at all. The concept is to be able to understand that market behavior and apply it to, you know, either the strategy that we use, which is, you know, called the congressive trading strategy, or even, uh, you know, a strategy that you use on your own. But you don't have to use the indicators. Uh, Vikram, yeah, send you a link with the webinar. If you want to sign up at that URL, Vikram, we can get that to you as well. Uh, Lorna, Euro USD is the 6E. My pleasure, Ed. 
Uh, Marshall, yes, you can get a recap. We'll be, we'll be sending it out to everybody, Marshall. Uh, if you'd like to get the recap of the live class we're going to have tomorrow, just sign up at that URL, and we'll be able to go ahead and get that to you as well. We normally record all of our classes on purpose. Uh, Richard, hiring? Uh, no, my man, right now uh, we have our hands pretty full with training our new traders, our in-house traders here in Colombia, so we're, we're not looking for any, any um, as, I, as I mentioned before as well, Richard, we don't hire any employees. We use our own traders that have been through the training program to help us teach and, and make themselves better. Uh, Vass, do you show the people ins and outs, the details of the e-minis, as I don't know much about them? Absolutely. Tomorrow we'll, we'll delve into that a little bit more as well, Vass. Uh, yeah, Dave, uh, Euro USD is the 60, Lorna. Yep, that's right. Uh, Polly, if you're trading at that time, uh, we can send out a recap for you. Uh, my pleasure, Joaquin. Uh, what time frame do you use in the TF? The TF, you can use the two 233 off the top of my head. Jesus, I'd have to look that up. I have that in a list somewhere. I actually started on the Russell 2000, Jesus, and then I switched over to the E-mini S&P 500. What we like to do is we teach everybody on the E-mini S&P 500, and then a lot of guys will apply those same principles to other markets. Leon, I'm not sure how this can work for swing trading and high probabilities. The, the trade setups, Leon, work the same on smaller time frames or larger time frames. Uh, what is the link for the class tomorrow? Uh, we have that URL there. I'll type it in the chat for you, Tom. Uh, Tyler, we're going to go through those options tomorrow. Uh, the live class tomorrow, G, is going to be at 12 p.m. EST. We actually have a, a live class for some of our in-house traders tomorrow, so we're, we're going to do that right after the live class tomorrow. My pleasure, Vass. Have a great one. And I'm just catching up here with all the questions, guys.